am recording this because I I had this great idea and it is so incredibly good and so there's a possibility that I would want to do a like a documentary like a film not film well whatever uh, some type of documenting the process of having this uh, idea come into life and so I thought I'd start right at the very 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 beginning what is my big idea you say yeah that's what you want to know okay so I made vortexes last year and it worked out so incredibly well I was so happy it was just it was I couldn't have asked for better and next year it's gonna be better way better way 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 better okay uh, so the idea Built in, into uh, plants and people and anything probably alive is a particular set of numbers, like it, it's called the Fibonacci sequence. It, it's, it's a very efficient way for life to, to grow or to, it's like it's the most efficient thing that they can, they can follow is that number, like on your hand, uh, this section right here is approximately twice of that, those in that section. That section plus this section equals that section. And that section equals that section, and so on. Uh, and that's, so that's how it's built into you. And it's also built into plants, even, even in greater you know, observable detail. Having that sequence in there makes you appreciate things in nature automatically that have that same symmetry or that same pattern. What happens at the base of the vortex is something similar where, where the air will come in and from the side slowly in an arc and then starts to spiral around. If it's moving, um, as it rolls around, there's a low pressure center uh, in, a vor in a vortice, and that mo that pressure or that center is trying to be filled with air. And that's what's happening throughout the whole turbulence. Uh, it's all all be trying to be equal. What it is is just like a fan mounted on a can, <laughs> just a tin can, and then inside it, I made a new little piece for it. I started uh, working with Kiki Petit on uh, new Olympic cauldron ideas. So when you turn it on, then the fan goes, supposedly. Then what we do is we take and we bring a fuel source to it. the flame inside. And the right speed, we get this cute little vortex. Darker so you can see it. See the rotation.
it, I didn't make it very well, like, because it was a prototype, and so it's very dangerous, and parts may fly off at any given moment. So I don't, you know, it's it's retired. Uh, center section moves a lot faster than the outer section. This would go around about uh, 43 RPM on the outer part and 400 in the inner part. And that's just how a vortex works. It, uh, the air comes in slowly at the outside and then at the very inside it's spinning really rapidly. But the center section allows the vortex to generate right from that spot, right from the center. I melted it a few times, got it too hot. Uh, it used to have aluminum on it and I learned that aluminum uh, does melt if it gets too hot. I uh, warped some of these aluminum blades. At one point in time, I melted the steel inside. <laughs> but I had blades inside a different center section and it flattened out because it was so hot. Uh, but it, it's a little bit crude. Uh, someday I hope to make another one again. Well, with, with my earlier test with my Vortex machine that I made a couple of years ago, it used uh, some central seeding type uh, seeding, I call it a seeding because it, it, I call it a seed vortex or a seed seeder is what I call it, S-E-E-D-E-R, <laughs> uh, because it, pr it produces the very, the very initial part of what the vortex needs to, to be created. So you could start a fire vortex straight out of the seeder and you could, you could make it grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow because there would be no wind. It would just go right from the center, and you could do it from any anywhere, as long as you were keeping with, with the same direction of the wind. So my idea that hopefully will occur is that I'll be able to make make this vehicle generate. Fame, flame vortex, have it get up there 50, 100, 300 feet high, 300 feet, yeah. <laughs> blacksmith and in a little teeny rural town so he he started the metalwork uh, and that went on through my grandpa and my grandpa taught me quite a bit he was an ingenious guy so my grandpa was a machinist uh, and my dad was a shop teacher so between the two I had a lot of mechanical uh, skills I grew up Mormon for a quite you know, until I was 18 or so. Uh, I, I was I practiced the Mormon religion. Uh, it's just it's just a it's a small community, you know, and they have everybody knows everybody, and uh, everybody everybody will see this and freak out. <laughs> oh, I'd be like, I 
thought he went on a mission and was a good boy. He's been going to Burning Man. Pretty Man attracts people that don't fit in the way the rest of society is in. You have to put yourself out there and risk a little bit to be here. Well, you know, coming from a Christian's point of view, which I am, this is not a place for a Christian, but it's a getaway. <laughs> what, what, what makes it challenging for a Christian? Not falling into temptations. I mean, you know, there's illegal substances out here. Sex seems to be free, free thing. You know, it's not getting lured into temptations, which for me, it's not a problem that I see other people being lured into those categories. It's a different world out here. The other aspect is people come out here to get away from their stressful lives and their greedy lives and come out here and people are more giving and more kind and more of a unity thing out here. Some people think that this is a pagan ritual uh, that is going against the norm, that is, you know, debauchery and and it's their own judgments, you know, and it comes from a place of, of not knowing and being afraid of that. So it's easier to judge it and, and, and call those people outcasts and you know, rebellious. I'm 81 and uh, I was ready to climb the ladder here. Uh, it was a fabulous night last night watching all the different entertainment. I think people are missing a whole lot by not being out here and seeing all this. It's definitely different, once in, once in a lifetime kind of affair. It is just it is a party in the desert, but it's so much more than that. It's it's so much bigger and such a such a special thing that's been created for you know for all of us to come together and be able to spread the spread the energy that we create here out into the world. And um, you know until you get here, you just you don't understand. It's it's fear. It's basically the fear that we all carry around with us every day until we get here and participate and understand and take that that leap of faith and in going into the unknown desert. You know that things can be transformed. <laughs> I guess I can, I'm able to go a little bit beyond what other people would do. Uh, I guess letting go of the fear part uh, of those particular things, and they, uh, it's a reward actually. Um, in the end, um, because uh, on the other side of fear is beauty.
when there's something new uh, that people fear or I fear, it's it's all a perceived thing. It doesn't fear doesn't exist. Um, so with fire and this this imagery, there's a certain amount of um, fear you have to get through to be able to be comfortable with the with doing it. Um, creativity exists in giving up the reason, and then then you can you can purely create. Once you give up the reason, then you instinctually go somewhere. It's a it's a pure form of creativity than, than doing something for a reason. Seven or eight years ago, I uh, invented this process to, and, uh, to make uh, a photographic image out of my blood. As I was starting to develop the process, I you know, realized I needed more blood, so I, so I learned how to draw my own blood just with a needle and, and a tube, and then you, uh, you actually put it in the blender so it doesn't coagulate. <laughs> and so, uh, and then you, then after that, then you can uh, paint it on, or you can mix it with the chemical and paint it, paint it on. So I just, I just, just have to learn how to be a phlebotomist by yourself. <laughs> You know, being able to like appreciate the color, and uh, instead of just being shocked or afraid of of something that you haven't seen before. When I get beyond the fear, then I get I just get to enjoy in depth what the, the actual you know what is real, like you know the color, the way that it looks it makes a really beautiful print. So with the fire, it's the same thing. It's beautiful. Can be you can, you can you can spend your time fearing it, or you can spend your time enjoying and, and appreciating the beauty of it, of anything really. And uh, that's what I choose to do: is to to concentrate on the beauty of things instead of uh, the negative aspects. You have a choice. Uh, it's always a choice. So learning how to learning how to choose the the positive side and the beauty side and not giving power to the fear is the important part. Okay, so I was thinking about I was thinking about the uh, how to create those and, and create this car. Good idea. Okay, here you see. See, there's the car, and there's the dust devil, a couple hundred feet high, and see, the, the, this is a very rough sketch, of course. Right there is the art car, okay, and the cedar unit, top view. What else we got? Uh, anyway, you get the point. Okay. Uh, <laughs> The amazing part of Burning Man is that people will just help you uh, for no money. <laughs> they just want to help for the experience. This is my dad. <laughs> yeah. He says that I have to tell him it won't work, and then it does. So that's that's what I think about. <laughs> I, I I hope to see it work. His others have worked, so I hope to see this would work. truck <laughs> I needed to push it around somehow so I stretched the, the level of my agreement with the <laughs> rental company and uh, we actually bolted uh, the special frame to the frame of the truck and, and then drove this thing around the desert with the truck.
because they're just exhausted from, from having fun. <laughs> I guess I like happy people. I like to make people happy. I lost my hair when I was six years old. Off and on, my hair would fall out throughout the school year. It was seasonal for a little while. And then after a while, I was totally bald. I think in fourth grade, I was totally bald. Well, I, I got teased a lot. Not a tremendous amount, but it was hard. It was kind of hard to transition in between. And for a little while, I had a wig. And <laughs> it was like being two people. And that wasn't fun at all. That's when I really learned to hate myself really good in 10th grade or something. I would go hide in the library most of the time, just avoiding people. <laughs> that obviously had an effect on how I related to myself, I guess, which then, of course, has an effect. Later, it had an effect at Burning Man. I wasn't terribly a happy person back when I first went to Burning Man, and there, something switched for me or something changed for me. I guess I had to let my guard down a little bit and I gave up, I guess I gave up some anger. It must have made a, an impact on me because about a month and a half later, I started doing my own Burning Man art out in the middle of nowhere. So I built this sculpture and we burned it. And I think that was the start. That was the very, like the very beginning of when uh, I started letting go of some of that anger that I developed. It doesn't take any processing of the brain to gain the happiness that this can provide. It's just it's the immediate experience that people see it. Uh, they see it forming and going into its, its tight twisting form and, and they just respond to it automatically. There's no, there's no thought, they don't have to rationalize. It turned me on in a very different kind of way. You know, it's more of that sensual energy that's pervasive, sort of tantric fire energy, kundalini all over the place. out there on the edge. He's doing experimental vaporizers and things I've never seen before and they're working great. Yeah. I'm the chief inspector for the LP gas board in the state of Nevada. So I'm responsible for safety in Nevada. I'm working with the performance safety team. We go around, we do inspections as Nate knows. We spent two days with him going over his piece to make sure it's safe. We have a lot of people around here. We don't want anybody to get hurt. So it's very safe. Uh, he feels pretty educated to me. He seems to know what he's doing. If he's guessing, he's guessing right. I do involve engineers in the project, <laughs> and I consult them often. Uh, and then I go, <laughs> I go with what I think will work. Uh, so it's mostly inter intuition. I don't, I don't have any training in, in physics or fluid dynamics. Uh, I watch the world, I guess, and, and learn from the physical world. We're going to take the center section out of the machine or out of the these fans and make vortexes with handheld flamethrower devices. And we'll have one or two of us in the center with silver proximity suits on and we'll be creating vortexes that way.
back to this idea. That's so good. Uh, this is so good. Okay. Wow. Um, okay, I'll get to the good part. Okay. What this is, is it's a pressure vessel. And these are uh, old tanks made in 1946 and they're very rare uh, propane tanks. This tube goes, this pipe goes into the bottom and draws bottom off the bottom, or draws liquid off the bottom just like an, an aerosol can. This is my own design of, of a release mechanism. When I put a current, a high current through this, it melts a wire, this little teeny wire, then these arms swing out and this lid pops off essentially. And then all the contents at whatever pressure is inside, probably around 90 to 100 PSI, uh, all that contents uh, just jumps out of the tank really quick. We're, today we're doing a water test to see if these, if they still work. <laughs> and uh, so you'll, you will see rain today. The theme of, of Burning Man this year is called Green Man, which is an uh, ecological theme. And these figures were kind of worshipping the oil derrick. And then it, it climaxes into the, this giant consumption of this oil derrick. They asked me to, to provide a giant fireball for, uh, for the climax, for, for the end of it. Of it. And this is, uh, happens to be a, a very non-ecological project. <laughs> be removing this this ladder and there's a, a, a propane nozzle at the bottom that is attached to this long pipeline and the pipeline is filled with liquid propane and then it just the it shoots up through the two and a half inch nozzle um, up to uh, up through this hole supposedly and then envelops the, the tower in fire and that's what will actually consume part of the, the tower. Jack Schroll is the guy who's doing that one. This is a bigger project, and I'm only a, a small part of it, even though it's a massive project. When I do all four of them on uh, Friday night, there will be uh, probably 210, 220 gallons in each one, uh, which makes 880 gallons, probably. Each tank is gonna have about 60% jet fuel, and a little bit of gasoline, and the rest will be propane. So the fireball is gonna be, in my estimation, about uh, from the white tanks, my tanks there, over to the pink tanks, over the, to the, the black trailer. So that's how wide it'll be, but it'll be way up high, really, really high, and it'll be mushrooming. Um, and so the distance, you know, the distance is, you're still far away from it when it gets big. So, uh, because it, because of the height. And so I'm, I, I just, the, yeah, you don't know, because we haven't done this yet.
So, hope this video was worth it and that you got to see my idea materialize. It's one of my better ones. <laughs> yeah, okay. okay. So, next is just make it work, make it happen. No problem. <laughs> see you, thank you.